Hello and welcome to another video lecture. Today we talk about how one can get into research. I divided this lecture into two parts. The first part that you are watching now will talk about what you need to have to go for a research degree. In the second part of this lecture, I discuss how you can prepare yourself and mitigate possible lacking that you may have. However, before we begin, I'd like to clarify a few things to our audience who are watching this lecture from our YouTube channel only. This lecture is a part of an accelerator program called Global Higher Education Mentorship Program. This mentorship program is designed to involve participants in collaborative activities. We use Google Classroom Business Plus Edition LMS where we conduct the program. It's free and open to everyone. You are more than welcome to watch only the videos but joining our mentorship program and participating in the collaborative activities will help you massively in this journey. If you are interested, please check the link in the comment section. It will tell you how to join the mentorship program. Now, let's get started. How do I start a research degree? This is a question I encounter very frequently. Many people who ask me this question are not involved in any form of research activity. They expect to apply and join a research degree quickly without carefully considering whether such a degree is suitable for them or not. This is why I start any discussion like today's lecture with a funny question. Can I wake up in the morning and decide to do a PhD? Well, the answer is definitely no. You might ask me why not? If someone can decide to do an MBA or a similar course this way, then why not a PhD or a research master's? Well, it's because PhD or a research degree is different and requires pre-preparation. I even don't support hasty decision and even before deciding to go for an MBA or a master's degree, one must carefully consider all possible pros and cons. Just a side note, we have a lecture to help people identify the difference between MBA and a regular master's program. If you are interested, check the first comment of this video for that lecture's link. Now, getting back to my point again. Although I don't support hasty decision, one can do it with an MBA course, but when it comes to doing a PhD or a research master's, you need to have at least three things. First, you must have an understanding of research. Second, a background that at least tells that you are capable of doing a research degree. Third, and the final, a mindset. If you are confused at this stage, don't worry, I will explain all three one by one. You might ask me, what do I mean by an understanding of research? Well, I basically indicated you are supposed to have an understanding of basic principles of research. It's also good to have some idea about research problems and research questions and some know-how of research methodology. Last but not least, you must know how to write a research proposal. You will realize what I'm saying here when you start to apply. Almost all universities will ask you to submit a research proposal. So you must know how to write it. Many universities will ask you to manage a potential supervisor. Or if they don't, it's a good idea to manage one supervisor first. It's a common practice. And when you try to manage a supervisor, you have to demonstrate some research know-how. Also, in your statement of purpose or personal statement, whichever way you call it, your motivation to do a research degree must be reflected there. You cannot do these unless you have some form of understanding of research. Next, you might ask me why would I need a research background? It is mainly because of three major reasons. 
to demonstrate your profile to the admission committee, to convince the potential supervisor, and to be able to identify your research domain where you like to do your PhD or research masters. I know many universities would accept students without any prior research background to their research courses, especially in Canada and the US. It is because they often have classes where they prepare students before exposing them to research. However, in countries like the UK or Australia, you hardly get that scope and prior knowledge generally helps students to get a great start in their research journey. And the third requirement is a mindset. What does it even mean? It's all about your passion for research. If you don't like research, still you can join a research degree, but possibly you cannot complete it. If you somehow complete the degree, it's going to be a very bitter experience. Also, your confidence will play a vital role in this journey. Research degrees are all about conducting original research. It's not like reading someone else's theory and passing the exams. It's all about you and your idea, especially if it's a PhD degree, you have to come up with a new idea, otherwise you won't get your PhD. Another crucial element of research is your integrity. Being able to judge right and wrong in research practice is vital. A person who is not matured enough to understand the core value of research is likely to do misconduct in their study. Universities are very strict about such misconducts and will not take it easily at all. Often students get terminated for their wrongdoing that they think not serious. Before anyone join a research degree, it is important to develop this understanding of what they can do and what they cannot do. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend you to go for a research degree. Even if you go, you keep complaining and will sound like a crybaby. In the end, it will not bring any good outcome either for you or your supervisor. That's all for today. Please watch this video again and try to identify any lacking that you may have. In the next part of this lecture, we will discuss how you can prepare yourself. Meanwhile, please submit your questions in the Google Classroom. I will try to arrange a QA video to answer those questions. Stay safe and I will see you in the next video very soon.